this as an us versus them. Um, I, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not buying into that. I think that's dangerous. And, and again, look, there's a lot of people, there are a lot of short sellers out there that have been borrowing stock they didn't have. In other words, yes, I think there are dynamics sure, where yeah. retail investors can get caught. But it's 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 really a, a dynamic where I think this is going. Ah! Go Markets ending the week on a high note with the S&P just a quarter of a percent from its record high. Leading the way, big tech, Microsoft, Alphabet, Apple, Facebook, all posting substantial gains. This is the yield on the 10-year Treasury drop below, dropped following the May jobs report with slower than expected growth, easing inflation concerns. Tim, you were saying earlier on our call that you thought it was, it was a very big day for the market, very big stretch for the markets. Well, it's been a very big uh, two plus weeks since we had that turnaround Wednesday. And, and so off that intraday low, you've got markets in the S&P up almost five, excuse me, four and a half percent uh, in a short amount of time with the VIX plunging another nine percent today, 16 and a half dollar back in a down mode, gold rallying and mega cap tech outperforming, despite the fact that if you look at mega cap tech or at least the triple Q's versus the S&P, they've underperformed the S&P by seven and a half percent since mid-February when, you know, we kind of peaked on all that frothiness around SPACs and everything else. Um, but I, I do think it's a case where markets uh, really today went into the weekend with no cares in the world, seemingly with the Fed on the sidelines. And that worries me a bit. Yeah, I mean, Fed on the sidelines is the best news possible. The weaker than expected jobs report, um, you know, bookmark with hotter than, you know, expected inflation on many metrics, Karen. That that sort of gives us this sort of Goldilocks era for yields, which is fantastic for big cap tech. Right. In the in the short term. Right. Right. Ultimately, you do want unemployment to go back down further. Right. But we're sort of we don't want any sudden moves. You know, I always think of the analogy. The Fed is sort of holding us hostage. And if nobody makes any sudden moves, we'll all get out of here alive. So I feel like that was not a sudden move today. It's a little little less than we would like, but it wasn't super hot, which I think would be worse. So we don't have that market multiple compression that a real hot tape would, you know, a jobs number would have shown us. To be, so it, it, was, it was just fine, but I'd like to see actually a little more job growth. The, the market has been really performing well, right, right here between on the 10 year, it is 155, 1555 to 174 on the 10 year yield. If we break down, we lose value. If we break above that 174, we lose tech. So if you're a market index person, you're hoping we break down. But right now, as long as we stay right here, it's kind of perfect for everybody. Yeah. Guy, what do you what do you make of the market action? Yeah, I love Karen's analogy, but I saw Dog Day Afternoon actually in the theaters when I was a kid, and it didn't work out too well for John Casal, for you folks that know what I'm talking about. I, listen, I agree. And right now, everything looks great. The Fed's doing everything right. I just don't know how long it's going to last. And the market action... You know, it's, it's what it's been now for the last seemingly seven or eight years. You know, in a couple down days, market forgets about why it was lower, and here we are off to the races. But Peter Bookbar put up a, a pretty interesting piece about this number, and I think what the market fails to recognize is wage inflation is here, and that's not going away anytime soon. And I think when the market figures that out, the yields that are great here at 156 might be significantly higher in the weeks to come. Have the stocks and companies, Tim, who would suffer, in theory, the most from wage inflation, although they benefit on the other side in terms of customers having more money in their pockets, have they factored that in, do you think? You know, some of the, some of the, the companies that are well, Walmart. really... Walmart. Yeah. Walmart, yeah. exactly. McDonald's, right. you name it. Yeah, so, so look, it's... There's different reasons why Walmart has gone sideways and really not taken part. It was my final trade last night. I, I think Walmart, uh, their profitability, their gross margins are, are improving. I think they, they win the food wars eventually and they're taking share on e-commerce. And, and I think that's more important. The labor input costs are significant. And, and it, look, it's good for America. It, it's good for some of the social dynamics that are awful in our country, frankly, where people are underpaid and can't raise a family, uh, you know, working a full week at a place like Walmart. I'm not saying, you know, Walmart's doing this to people, but the point you're asking about labor pressures is very real. 
Um, and I think it's going to start to be a, a bigger issue, especially with some of the industrial companies that are going to have to also increase their 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 pay to labor, but also the cost inputs in terms of a lot of materials prices. I think, you know, I think the second half of the year, those are big issues. Um, Karen, good for the consumer, bad for the markets. Where do you come out on that? On the wage, wage inflation, yeah. Oh, that's, that's a, I think net net slightly better for the consumer. More consumers with more money. Yeah, but yeah. worse for stocks. Yes. In theory. In theory, if right, rates go up.